Christian Parenting. Welcome to the Christian Parenting Podcast. I'm your host, Steph Thurling. I'm the Executive Director of Christian Parenting, a mom of three, and I am so glad that you're here. This is a place where you can bring your real self, no matter what that looks like today, and be given the space, resources, and encouragement you need to set aside perfection and grow into the perfectly imperfect parent God made you to be. If we want our kids to develop a lasting faith, we need to be teaching them about Jesus in the home. Parents are so important in raising kids to know, love, and follow Jesus, but it is really hard to know where to start. There's a lot of amazing content out there, so Christian Parenting did all of the sorting and filtering for you and put together a resource to help you navigate it all. Discipleship Simplified is a digital guide that includes some of the best articles, podcasts, and videos on topics like faith at home, reading the Bible, theology, prayer, church and worship, and character. You'll also find conversation guides and discussion starters and even scripts to use with your kids. So if you've ever wondered, what do I say when my kid doesn't want to go to church? Discipleship Simplified has a script for that. Or if you want to know how to weave scripture and conversations about faith into your everyday life, Discipleship Simplified has ideas for that too. Since this guide is digital, you can download it straight to your phone or computer and search through resources whenever you need it. I know that this guide will be helpful every time you have a question about discipling your kids. You can go to cpgive.org to download your copy for just $5. That's the best of the best resources from top Christian parenting contributors for just $5. Again, that's cpgive.org. Hey everyone, thank you so much for being with me today. I'm sitting down with Colton Dixon, and you may know him as a Christian singer-songwriter and a finalist from American Idol. His music has won numerous awards, and he has had the opportunity to perform in some pretty incredible places, including the White House and Good Morning America. But most importantly, he is a husband and the dad of two three-year-old twin girls. Colton has so much to share about how his faith has influenced his parenting and his music, how we are here to serve and not be served, why we need to steward our time and ability as well. And he reminds us that our identity is not how others see us, but our identity is found in Christ. He also shares what he was like as a kid and gives some encouragement to parents who are raising creative and passionate kids. And hint, it has less to do with parenting right and more to do with the time you spend. I love at the very beginning when he gives some biblical encouragement for all the parents who sometimes have to travel for work. That's me. God sees you and he is full of grace. We also talk about Christmas traditions at the end, so listen all the way through. Enjoy. Hi, Colton. Welcome. Hey, thank you so much for having me. Really appreciate that. Yeah, this is fun. You, I appreciate your time because you are a very busy man. You released a Christmas single. You're on tour. You just sang the national anthem at the Chiefs Chargers game, which right now is like a very big deal for (laughs) non-football related reasons. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> and I'm sure that when you signed on to do that, you did not expect all of America to suddenly be very invested in the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, we agreed to do but that back in June before the circus came to town. So yeah, it was uh that was a wild day. But yeah, I'm an sure honor for either many way, reasons. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and you're a husband and a dad. So thank you for taking Man, time yeah. out of your busy schedule. Yeah. Thanks yeah. again for having me. Yeah. Um it's gonna be good. Yeah. Okay. So I want to hear about your family because this is Christian parenting. So tell us a little bit for people who don't know you, tell us a little bit about you and then your family. And then can you describe your family in one word or phrase? Yeah. um, Quick snippet about me and then I'll go into family. Um, Grew up in a Christian home, uh, started pursuing music when I was pretty young. Um, About 13 is when I felt call of music on my life. and, And that was kind of a wild thing in and of itself. And my sister and I went out for American Idol. Um, I was right out of high school, and uh, that was a couple year journey for us. And then that was the door that got opened to this crazy life that I get to live. And and uh, yeah, I think that was also the moment where I um, also matured the most spiritually. Um, God really took me on a journey during those couple years, and um, and that's also where I met my wife uh, Annie. Um, right at the tail end of uh, the American Idol journey. And uh, we dated for 
few years, long distance, which is uh, not for the faint of heart, but we did it. And, uh, and in 2020, um, we had identical twin girls. Um, they are the best. Love being a twin dad, love being a girl dad. Um, there's three now. Um, so I almost don't even feel qualified to be on this podcast. I'm like, I'm still <laughs> figuring this out, y'all. We're still in the trenches, um, but we're having so much fun. And uh, yeah, that is like the quickest snapshot into upbringing and family that I can give. <laughs> and what's your one word? One word. I feel like this one word is going to require some explanation, but I would say unconventional. And here's why I would say that is my lifestyle is not your typical, it's not a typical day job. It doesn't, the hours don't look like that. Um, However, unconventional doesn't mean good or bad. It just means you have to be more intentional with the time that you do have. Um, And there's actually a verse that uh, has just really blessed me during the seasons when I haven't been home or haven't been able to be present. Um, and it's Matthew nineteen twenty nine. It says, and everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or fields for my sake will receive a hundred times as much and will inherit eternal life. And uh, I remember being on the road and seeing a friend of mine, Holvi, who does like Christian hip hop and he just had an, a new baby and and he was really just struggling with being away. And I got to m- encourage him with that verse. And I just remember seeing myself and him light up the first time he heard that verse. And, um, God's just really good and he'll redeem the time. And he also gives grace to those he calls. And, and uh, so I would say unconventional, but it requires more intentionality for our lifestyle. I like that. And I like that explanation in that verse. So thank you for sharing. That was good. And I will say that just because your girls are only three does not mean that you do not have parenting (laughs) wisdom to share because none of us turns out know what we're doing. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. You know, I found that, which is, it's oddly like encouraging to another parent, whenever you're talking to someone else and they're like, yeah, they're, they're six and we still have no idea what we're doing. I'm like, oh man, that just sounds, makes me feel so much better about this. (laughs) Yeah. Well, they're always changing and growing and each kid is different and every stage is different. So there is, you have wisdom to share, which leads me to what is the one thing that you want every parent to know? Man, I, I've been thinking about this, um, ever since you gave me a tip about this question. Um, For me, the thing that I've found that is the most helpful is we have this tool available to all of us as believers called Holy Spirit. And even in the moments when we think we're not qualified for the job, um, oftentimes when we feel that way, or we don't know what to do, whatever, um, we, we have the best father. We just do. We have the best parent available to us as a tool. And so rely on him, ask him questions, pray Mm -hmm. about your kids. Um, but my wife and I, we really, we really lean on God and and Holy spirit to guide us through everyday things. And, uh, there's nothing too big to go to him with. There's also nothing too small to go to him with. Um, Mm -hmm. what schools to put your kids in? Should we homeschool? Should we not, you know, just whatever it is. Um, just ask him and he'll give you an answer. Um, you just have to be open. So I would say, uh, depend on Holy Spirit and you'll be amazed. It takes so much off of you. It kind of goes along with that verse that talks about cast your cares. Um, and it's, it's amazing how freeing <laughs> it really is. Uh, so yeah, that's what I would say. Yeah. Parenting is definitely a lot harder when you try to hold on to it yourself, right? And Ooh. try to figure it all out and have all the power and all the control. because. We just yeah. don't. So we need exactly. the Holy Spirit. You find out really quick that you just don't. That's exactly right. Yeah. Right. Okay. So tell us more about your girls. Cause I know they had kind of a scarier start to life, but they're doing great yeah. now. Yeah. And obviously life changes practically when you have kids, like your everyday life changes, but your perspective changes too. So how did your life change since your girls have been around? Yeah. Um, I remember being in the hospital that night. And you're right. It was a little bit of a shaky start. Um, we had a 
uh, kind of a, kind of an emergency C-section situation. And, um, our first one out, um, didn't have a pulse, wasn't breathing, went through that whole chaos of a mess. Um, but was presented with that faith or fear option. And, and I'm so thankful that my wife and I grew up very similarly in the church. And so we just, we knew firsthand that, that God was still a God of miracles. So we prayed and believed and you're right. She's amazing now, little Dior. Um, but man, I remember being in the hospital that night and looking at my girls thinking, uh, man, there is nothing I wouldn't do for these girls. I'm just meeting them for the first time, but there's nothing I wouldn't do. And just feeling that tug from God, just basically saying, it wasn't an audible voice, but it was just a reassurance. Like, I feel the same way about you. And it, I can't explain it other than it just deepened the relationship that I had with the Lord. I've been walking with him since I was eight. Um, but the perspective of now being a parent and having, I don't know, having some, having kids that now make you feel selfless when you're around them. I feel like I better understood God's position, even when, when Jesus came to the earth and did what he did for all of us. Um, what a sacrifice that was. And so on all accounts, I feel like just the perspective of being a parent has deepened my relationship with the Lord on the spiritual side. Yeah. Um, you're right. On the practical side, life looks completely different. <laughs> it takes a village with twins. Um, we have seen uh, my wife's parents more than we ever have, <laughs> but it's awesome. Um, you know, we love it. Uh, we sometimes ask ourselves, like, what did we do before kids? Like, did, did we just, did we sit around all day? Like, what did we do? <laughs> totally. <laughs> For sure. I mean, it's just like, it's such a different type of busy when there are kids involved. Twins too. I always wanted yes. twins. And then after I had, I wanted my third to be twins really badly. And then after I had her, I was like, oh, thank you, Lord. Because I think I would have been too overwhelmed <laughs> with that. Man, I feel... But that I feel was my parents, ideal situation. Parents who have twins not on the first go, that to me, that would be that would be tough because we didn't know any yeah. different. Right. So our, our right. kid experience was just two at once and that's all we know. And it's, it's tough, but we don't have anything to compare it to. So for the parents who had one at a time and then had twins, whew, man, more power to you. Yeah. That is, that's a lot. <laughs> yes. Okay. So you kind of touched on how your faith has influenced your parenting. But how has your faith influenced your music? Yeah, um, honestly, faith is everything when it comes to music, and and um, I wouldn't be doing music without the faith counterpart. Um, really, I see music as a counterpart to my faith. Um, like growing up, some people keep a journal or or you know whatever. For me, that that safe space for me was sitting at the piano and just. I was, didn't even have to be writing songs. It was just either playing melodies or reflecting on the day or, or whatever. That was my one-on-one -on -one time with the Lord. And, and that has uh, kind of evolved into songwriting and, and now getting to perform and sing songs with other people. And, um, but yeah, I, uh, I knew from 13 that music was going to be just a tool that God used in my life to reach people. And so the goal every night is people. Um, and I kind of had to, a few years ago, my world kind of got rocked. It's really easy to, to show up. Like we're in a, uh, a really beautiful church today in uh, Wisconsin. And, and, you know, you send out a, um, a writer of things that are nice to have, um, like waters or vocal tea, you know, whatever. Um, but mm. oftentimes they go above and beyond and they really make you feel welcome. And so it's hard not to carry that mentality on stage of being served all day. Um, but I had to learn a few years ago that, man, I'm, I'm not here to be served. I'm actually here to serve. I believe God gave me these songs to reach these specific people in the room tonight. So how can I best steward the time that I have? And so that was a big shift for me, but, um, faith in general, like I said, I, I wouldn't have, um, I, I don't know. I just don't feel like I would have much to say 
uh, if faith wasn't the thing with my music. Yeah. Yeah. Tell tell us a little more about that perspective shift from like I'm here to I'm here to serve these people tonight. Yeah. Like, what did that it's, look like? It's kind of like um, I remember um, seeing uh, Lecrae at a big event, and uh, and he said something to the uh, equivalent of the church doesn't need any more celebrities. The church needs more servants. Mm-hmm. And uh, man, that just really got me thinking. Um, it's just really easy to believe hype. You know, um, my dad told me growing up, don't believe the hype, good or bad. Um, just do what you know you're called to do. And, and uh, it's really easy to fall in the ditch on either side of that road. Um, you have people telling you that you're awesome or that your song meant X, Y, or Z or whatever. And it's, it's really easy to start buying into that idea that you are better than for whatever reason. But then on the opposite side, you'll get 99 amazing comments and you'll have one negative comment. You'll focus on the negative. Um, Mm. But I think when you stop putting your self-worth and your identity and what others around you say, and you start putting it in who God says you are, it's just, it changes the game. At least it did for me. Um, because I know that my purpose every night, it is not based on whether the audience stands, sits, um, you know, dances along with us, head bangs with us during a rock moment. You know, it doesn't matter. Um, I'm there to serve them the best that I, that I can. And it's, it's up to God and Holy Spirit to do the actual work. Um, so all of that's off of me. We prepare Um, I heard a preacher say this one time, prepare like there's no such thing as Holy Spirit and preach like the Holy Spirit is the only thing that you have. And that is so Mm -hmm. good. It is so good. And I try and I try and do that every night uh, that I'm on stage. So all of that kind of played into that perspective shift for me. As a working mom, two of my goals for the new year are to take better care of myself and simplify. And one of the ways I'm doing that is with HelloFresh. There is a reason HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit. They make it so simple. All I have to do is pick my meals and my delivery date and all of the pre-portioned ingredients and step-by-step instruction come right to my door. That means less hassle, less wasted food, and they have health forward options like over 30 calorie smart and protein smart recipes each week. The recipe cards are easy to follow and they're full of pictures, so it makes cooking with my kids really fun too. And we all know that when they are involved in the cooking, they're more likely to eat it, so everyone wins. We have a great deal for you right now because I know that mornings can be crazy as a parent. I often find myself forgetting breakfast or grabbing something really fast, but you can go to hellofresh.com slash cppodcastfree and use the code cppodcastfree for free breakfast for life. That's one breakfast item per box while the subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at hellofresh.com slash cppodcastfree with the code cppodcastfree. So one thing that I've been asking people, especially not everyone, but especially people like you who are like, okay, my word's unconventional. Like my life's a little different. I do things a little differently. Yeah. Our family looks a little different is what were you like as a kid? Like where you said you started playing music at 13, like, but were you mm-hmm. always on the, like inclined to music? Were you a creative kid? Were you easy? Were you a little wild? Like, what were you like as a kid? <laughs> Um, you know, um, definitely creative kid. Uh, it was anything creative. I was all in. Um, I was, I feel like this might be a good way to describe me as a kid. Like I would get a Lego set or for me, like at Christmas, I always wanted like the big, I think they were called connects or something like the big roller coasters, but I would like oh, yeah, peace yeah, out. Yeah. I would peace out from my family, say, thank you so much. I love you. And I would be in my room for two or three hours completing the set. Like I it was just so focused and determined. And, and um, I still find myself that way today. If I have something that needs to be done, whether it's on music or even a project at, ha- at the house or whatever, I will, I just cannot, it's hard for me to put it away on the shelf and not do it. I'm like, Hey, I just need to, I need to do this. And I'm so focused. And what's funny is I see some of that in my daughter Athens. 
she's the same way. Um, she'll, mm. whether it's building something or playing with something, she's so focused and so in the zone. It just makes me chuckle. Um, but yeah, I, I think I was fairly easy growing up. There's nothing major. Um, however, I like, I did like to know where, like, where's the line? Um, for example, went to a private <laughs> high school and my hair is obviously a little nuts, right? So in high school, it was still similar and, uh, your hair couldn't be below your eyes, ears, or shirt collar. So I decided, Hey, I want to be different. I want to express myself in a unique way. So I kind of came up with this hairstyle and, uh, I found out very quickly where, where the line was <laughs> in, in high school, but, um, was never anything too crazy or extreme, but, um, yeah, I think that was, that was me as a kid. Yeah. So for parents out there who have a kid who's like hyper-focused on something or like really passionate about something, like what was your advice be to those parents who are like, I really want to nurture this in my kids, whether it's music or the Legos or whatever. Yeah. Man, honestly, something that I appreciate more from my folks more than anything else was the time that they spent with us. And, um, Mm. it didn't even have to be necessarily like in, in the things that we loved, although it often was, um, my dad like would be coach of the baseball team because I loved baseball just because he wanted to be a part of that with me. And, Um, but even building those, you know, roller coasters, whatever, like I would be so excited to share it with people after I completed it. I was like, so proud of it. So even just the fact that they would come, you know, take time away from their putting away decorations or, you know, getting ready for the extended family to come over, whatever they would come Mm -hmm. up and, and just kind of share that moment with me, like time meant more than anything else um, for me as a kid growing up. And, and I'm really thankful that that was something that they, um, continued to invest in my sister and I. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's good. That's so important to remember too, but it's easy to forget. It is easy to forget. Um, yeah, it is time often like cost us as parents more, um, you know, because it, time requires energy and attention and, and, uh, yeah, I even found just even with my three year old girls, they want to come over and show me something. Like I I've been bad about it in the past, but I just I have to set my phone down and and give them the attention mm-hmm. that they deserve. They deserve more attention than my you know, little brick of technology does. Um so it's uh, it can be a hard thing sometimes, but uh it's so important, so important to be intentional and to give your kids time. That's all. Yes. That's all. <laughs> yeah. I think everyone challenges with that. Like mm-hmm. everyone has a challenge with that. Like it's, it's really hard. <laughs> Very hard. Yeah. Sure. Um, but let's switch gears to Christmas because it's coming up and you released yes. your Christmas single. Wow. Yeah. So I tell us a little Christmas bit about your heart behind that song. I know. Man, I, like we also, we released this song three weeks ago, four weeks ago. And I'm like, why? I mean, we're, we're still at like the beginning of October here. They're like, trust me, we need to release it early just so it's available for the crazies who listen to (laughs) Christmas music in October. I'm like, okay, cool. I get it. Um, you know, no shame. Um, but, uh, yeah, honestly, the song is super fun. It's my first original that I've released, uh, you know, in the Christmas season. And it's like, if, if if I were to write, I'll be home for Christmas today, what would that sound like? What would I want to say? Mm. Um, all the things. And uh, my, my favorite line in this song is kind of the end of the chorus. But I say, it might take a plane, a train, or the back of a bus, but I'll be home for Christmas. Um, as a touring artist, mm. especially when you have a Christmas tour, like we ironically do, called the Home for Christmas Tour. Um, <laughs> there's like this sense of urgency at the end of the tour. It's like, all right, love you guys. So thankful I get to do this, but I am so ready to get home to my family and to 
take it all in and the festivities and, and all the fun things about Christmas, but also uh, the real reason why we celebrate Christmas, which I talk about in verse two of the song. And, and um, yeah, just, it's just really fun. So if you need, uh, if you need to get going in the Christmas spirit, I would recommend checking out the new one called home for Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. I just think it's so cool that you get the opportunity to make like a fun song talking about being home for Christmas, but also pointing people to the real reason for this season of Christmas. And that's just such a gift to be able to give the world. Yes, I, I agree. And that's, that's honestly something that I try to do in, in more than just Christmas music. Um, I think that my audience, um, because of American Idol or doors that God is continuing to open, there are for people who might not believe the same way that you and I do. So it's like, how can I make music mm. that that can compare and um, be in the same category as you know what the world likes to listen to, but also have um, have a message like for those who have ears to hear, they know what I'm saying. But for those who don't, maybe they're going to be turned on to something new. So I try to be intentional about that. Yeah, I love that. What do you do to celebrate Christmas with your family? Like when you get off that tour bus, what are your traditions going to be? Man, you know, we're we're still like this is our third year as like a new Mm -hmm. family unit. So we're we're still kind of figuring it out. Like up until this point, we've kind of bounced back between where her parents are and where my family is, which is kind of where um, home base is for us in Nashville. Um, so mm-hmm. like one year we'll be like, all right, we're home this year. And my family's like, yay. <laughs> and then the next year we're <laughs> like, all right, we're going to be in California this year, you know, with California Christmas, man, there's something just special about that. It's not, uh, it's not your typical, you know, um, evergreen white Christmas, whatever. But, um, there's just something special about walking out to Venice beach and seeing surfers on Christmas, just something to it. Um, but, uh, (laughs) we're still kind of figuring it out. And I think my, my girls too, I don't know. It's like, we love Disney world. Like we have so much fun there, but as you get older, like the excitement is not what it used to be, um, or whatever. Um, but then you have kids and it's almost like you're living through your kids again and you're excited for them to see it. You're excited for them to like light up and experience these things for the first time. I feel like the traditions around Christmas, like having kids have reignited that in my wife and I, it's like, wow, like, like exchanging gifts, like is a really nice sentiment when it's a bunch of adults in the room, but there's just something magical <laughs> that happens when you put totally. kids into the you know equation and it's just so fun and they're now like they know they're like hey this is on the christmas list so there's a chance right um <laughs> but at the same time we also do try to balance it's like all right this is a fun thing we do at christmas time but but baby jesus is why we really celebrate christmas that's why this is a holiday and um so we're we're still figuring out those traditions so yeah. Yeah. I think we're still trying to figure out those traditions too, in many ways. My kids are 11, 9, and 7. So we still have some yeah. time, but I also am very painfully aware that my oldest <laughs> will be 18 in like seven years. So I'm like, well, we're like over halfway done with Christmases where he's guaranteed to be home. So there's that. Wow, I mean, that but is a crazy thought. It is. It Yes, it's really crazy. But we also... My family's in Minnesota. My in-laws are in Colorado. So we bounce back and forth every year. So we've tried to find traditions that we can like bring with us no matter where we are. Like we always do birthday cake for breakfast on Christmas day and like nothing fancy. It's like a boxed cake mix. And then they decorate it that morning and we sing happy birthday. And who doesn't want cake for breakfast? You know, (laughs) we can do it wherever we are. What a great idea. I might... I might steal that. That's really good. I like that. It's a fun one because they get excited yeah. about it too. And it's just, it's kind of quirky. I mean, I think a lot of people end up doing birthday cake for Christmas, but I think the breakfast part is fun and doesn't matter yeah. where you are. You can always get a cake. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. My girls would love that too. Decorating a cake. We might have to yeah. do that this year. Yeah. I yeah. think 
I think you should try it. Yeah, some people are really good at their traditions and they do them every year. And I am not one of those people. So if you never find ones that we're, we're like, not totally yeah. fit for your family, that's okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, okay. So for people who are very excited about Christmas, but maybe not the October crazies, how do we listen to your song? Where are we going to find it? Where can we connect with you? And then if like people want to go to your tour, tell us about your tour, where you're going, all the things. Yeah, I can tell I've already offended people. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> honest, honestly, the easiest way, I know it's kind of old school, but coltondixon.com is like the hub mm-hmm. and it'll point you to social media. It'll point you to touring. It'll point you to the new songs. Um, the new song is going to be anywhere you listen to music, um, Apple Music, Spotify, YouTube, um, whatever. Um, we are doing a Christmas tour this year um, called the Home for Christmas Tour with my good friend Jason Crab, um, who's incredibly talented. Uh, his voice is not so excited to see what he does every night. We're going to scheme up a couple songs together as well, so it'll be a lot of fun. Um, we, we head out, I want to say, 1st of December. So December 1 is like the official first day of Christmas in the Colton Dixon camp. And we're stoked about it. Um, But yeah, so I think it's 12 shows. Check that out on coltondixon.com. And uh, yeah, I hope I didn't offend you. (laughs) (laughs) I don't listen to, I am a no Christmas till after Thanksgiving type of gal. Because I love Thanksgiving. Wow. But I feel like... yeah, I feel like the people who are listening to Christmas music in October are like unoffendable because they know that people have strong opinions. You know, that's a good point, actually. And it, here's the thing. I they can't just are much. like, I don't care what you think. I love Christmas. Yeah. And hey, more power to you. I get it. <laughs> I love it, too. Um, time and place, you know. But <laughs> I will say one year, like I was going to be gone. Uh, and I remember it was Halloween night and I set up. Christmas in our house, Halloween night. And I remember thinking, is this wrong? Like, it's, it's, <laughs> I feel like the police, you know, like the holiday police are going to like knock on my door. Um, but I was leaving for tour and I wasn't going to be back till like, you know, after Thanksgiving. So it was kind of nice to get home and everything was done. Yeah, I have no you room gotta to do talk. what works for your family and makes you happy. Do what, do what you want. Yeah. <laughs> Listen to Christmas in July. Yes. Go for it. Why not? Well, thank you, Colton, for being here today. I really appreciate all of your insight and everything you had to share. And I'm super excited for your tour. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Really appreciate it. Yeah, this is wonderful. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for listening today. I hope that you're having a wonderful Advent season with your families. May God bless you this week. May you feel the anticipation and love of Jesus as we wait to celebrate his birth. And during this busy season, may you be filled with extra energy, patience, and abundance of time so you can be intentional with your family. Thank you so much for listening to the Christian Parenting Podcast. If you haven't subscribed, you can do that now and that way you won't miss an episode. You can connect with us on Instagram at at christianparenting underscore org and see more resources at christianparenting.org. And if you're a mom raising daughters, we have the perfect course for you. Visit cpguides.org to learn more about our Helping Moms Raise Confident Daughters online courses. And lastly, if you have enjoyed this podcast or other Christian parenting resources, please consider donating to this ministry. Visit christianparenting.org and click the donate button. Christian Parenting is 100% donor funded and none of this would be possible without your help. We are so grateful for you. You're amazing. God bless you.